Hello and assalamu alaikum everyone. I am Kashif Kamran. Uh, the discussion I am having today with all of you is on another new article uh, which is published by the AAA examining team uh, in the month of August 2022. So definitely will have an impact for exams starting from September 2022 and onwards. Now, first of all, we need to understand that what is this new article about? We know that the examining team do publish articles uh, which relates to current issues or the examining team publish articles about knowledge on a given syllabus area or the examining team publish article for any revision or any updates uh, in the international standards on auditing. Now, this particular article uh, is basically about an update and a revision uh, in the international standards on auditing. And the new standards have been introduced known as international standards on quality management. And they're replacing the previous standards known as the international standards on quality control. Now, all the June exam students uh, who are taking the transition from June to September you must be very familiar with the terminology known as ISQC, International Standards on Quality Control 1. Now, that has been replaced with ISQM, International Standards on Quality Management 1 and International Standards on Quality Management 2. And then there is a revision in the ISA 220. The ISA 220 has also been revised to reflect the new terminology, which is quality management. So the previous, previously known terminology, quality control, has now been replaced with a new terminology known as quality management. And this is exactly the terminology which you will now be looking for in your upcoming exams because already uh, the practice exams available on the practice platform by ACCA uh, includes this terminology for exams from September 22 onwards. So if you look at the practice exams for September 22, all the practice exams, wherever there is a question on quality, now have a terminology quality management instead of quality control. Now, what impact will it have on students? Because again, when anything new comes in, uh, there is a lot of fuss from the student community about uh, why the ACC is bringing changes and why are they bringing so many changes ahead of the September exams, etc. You need to understand this change is a very minor adjustment. This will not change the way you answer your quality control question. This will not even change the approach you take in answering a quality control question with whichever tutor you have studied from and whether you have relied on my previous webinars or you are undertaking classes from me or any other teacher. The approach to an answer on quality will remain the same, but yes, there is some incremental impact, which is just minor, and that is not an adjustment where you should be making a fuss as a student. So let's, let's uh, understand more realistically, and this is a long discussion because there is too much uh, to spend time on under this new article on International Standards on Quality Management Part 1. And the examining team has already mentioned in the article that the Part 2 will be coming. So let's, uh, let's expect the Part 2 coming in the next couple of weeks from now, which will be covering the International Standards on Quality Management 2 and the ISA 220 revised. The current part is covering the ISQM, the International Standards on Quality Management 1. Now, first of all, you need to understand that there is a terminology which is changing. We used to have a terminology known as quality control. Now we have a terminology quality management. Now, the word quality remains the same. It's only the second terminology which is changing. Control versus management. Now try to understand this holistically. Control is more like check and balance. Control is more like box ticking. Uh, control is more like a checklist, just like an internal auditor do. 
but control is more like compliance but management is more like an approach management is more like being proactive management is more like the uh, the leadership in the audit firm needs to be more proactive when it comes to delivering quality they need to be more proactive in deciding what is better for their audit firm because there are so many different sizes of audit firms which exist globally there are small firms there are medium sized firms there are very large audit firms like the price waterhouse cooper like deloitte kpmg and eny etc now each firm and each firm leadership needs to decide what's good for them so it is a more proactive approach to quality management it is a more proactive approach to quality and every firm needs to manage so it's it's more beyond what's written in isqm1 it's more about deciding beyond isqm1 it's more about deciding what suits you as an audit firm and take decisions accordingly so every firm needs to have a robust quality management in place they need to have a proactive quality management in place because at the end of the day you need to increase the public trust in the audited financial statements you need to increase the public trust or confidence in the services which are offered by the audit firm and that's where the quality management becomes important because the purpose of quality management is to ensure that the yardstick of quality the benchmark of quality and the the, the gap the gap between the auditor and the public in terms of trust is narrowed down the the public starts to trust the audited financial statements more and better and that's where this standard has come in so try to understand the difference between the term control and management so management is more about being flexible deciding what is best for you taking guidance from isqm1 and you can then change the guidance uh, with your firm policies because every firm has policies so you you need to devise your own policies uh, to ensure what is a better reflection of quality management the isqm1 has given you the guidance that this is the quality management this is what a firm should have in place but you are flexible enough to change things within those structures to devise what is good for your audit firm primarily the big firms right has a lot to do here because they have a very complex structure they have lot lots of clients lots of services lots of resources lots of lots of people uh, fulfilling the role of leaderships the partners and that's where quality management becomes more complex and mo much more important so let's open this discussion i hope this intro uh, would benefit you in terms of understanding the perspective where we are discussing this particular new article now moving on into this discussion quality management the current standard for quality management which was previously known as quality control are the international standards on quality management 1 which we are covering today by the virtue of the new article so international standards on quality management 1 quality management for firms that performs audit or review of the historical financial statement so the international standards on quality management 1 is providing the quality management uh, as a dimension as a structure for the for the audit firms right for the audit firms which offers audit and for the audit firms which offers review of the financial statement so that's more broader application so that means the isqm1 is applicable to an audit firm uh, which is offering services range of services not just the audit of the financial statement but also the review of the financial statement so either the firm performing audit or the review of the financial statement this quality management standard is applicable the second one is isqm2 which will be published in the second article engagement quality control review so that particular standard will tell us about how a quality control review is performed and what are parameters of an engagement quality control review under the isqm1 so a further clarification a further guidance on quality control review will come under isqm2 we know this uh, we used to see the term engagement quality control review in exam papers and we know that you are playing a role of an engagement quality control reviewer in the exam paper 
even if you look at the previous exams as well, examiner used to assign you that you are an engagement quality control reviewer and you're conducting a review of the audit prior to the financial statements being signed. But uh, what is a clarity on the reviewer? What What is the role of the reviewer? What the reviewer should do? Uh, the ISQM2 will emphasize on that. Thirdly, the ISA 220 has been revised primarily for the reflection of the term quality management. We, th this was the same title of the ISA 220, but it was quality control for an audit. Now it has become quality management for an audit. And even if you look at the title of ISQC1, it was very, it was similar to ISQM1. The title of ISQC1 was quality control for a firm. Now it is quality management for a firm. So first thing changing is the term. So the if you look at the titles of these uh, standards and you compare them with the previous one, everything is the same except the word control has now been taken over with the word management. So you look at the title of ISA 220, it's still the same, only the change of term control versus management. You look at the title of ISQM1 and you compare it with ISQC1, there's only one change, which is control versus management. Rest remains the same. So these are the standards now on quality management, which will be impacting the future exams of AAA. Now, moving onwards and covering this first article and first ISQM1 today. The article focused on ISQM1. A second article will look at ISQM2 and the ISA 220 revised. So we need to wait for that article to be published. And once published, I will be doing a session on that as well. So that sets the future. Okay, now moving towards... Uh, the standard we are discussing today, which is ISQM1. The key issues underlying quality standards, right? What is the purpose? What is the objective? Why we need quality standards? Why there is so much emphasis by IASB on quality standards? Let's take the background perspective. The need for audit partners, which is the leadership, and the audit team, the one who performs the audit, to exhibit professional skepticism with an independent and a challenging mindset is emphasized. So that is where the standards have come in. The standards have come to reinforce. The standards have come to emphasize not something new, but something which is existing. You're emphasizing the attitude of the auditor. You're emphasizing the skeptical approach of the auditor. You are emphasizing that the auditor needs to be independent. He should have a challenging mindset he should have a questioning mindset. So these are the terminologies the AAA student is used to. But these standards have come in to emphasize them, to reinforce them, and to ensure that the public trust is upheld. This is especially important when assessing a client judgment and estimations. So when you are performing the audit and you are assessing the judgments of the management, you're assessing the estimations of the management, you need to have a challenging mindset. You need to be skeptical because that's where you can uplift the quality management of the audit. That's where you can demonstrate that you are reducing your detection risk as an auditor. Because at the end of the day, if you reduce your detection risk and you publish a credible audit report, you are improving the public trust. So the auditor has to perform the audit. The auditor has to plan the audit with, with the quality management in focus. And at every stage of audit, the quality management has to be forced in so to improve uh, the public confidence and to reduce the detection risk. Next, audit teams needs to have competence because that's, that's another element of quality management, right? If, if you have the desired competence, you have skills, you have experience, you can perform a better audit. You can exercise better judgments. You can have a more challenging mindset as an auditor. So you should have a desired competence and support to do this with a without fearing negative implications. Do the audit. Don't think about the negative implications. Don't think about uh, if, if we go against the client, we'll lose the client. Don't look at the monetary implications because a lot of time, the auditors have a fear factor that if we go against the client, we'll lose our audit fees because we will be ending our relationship with the client. We know the self-interest is a very big barrier 
when it comes to quality management. And that self-interest is the negative implication. So if, if we focus on self-interest, we'll never, we'll never be delivering the quality management and we'll never be uh, attaining that public trust back. And, and that, that, is, that is the realistic side of the audits. We, we need to keep the negative implications back and move forward looking at quality management. The quality standards adopt a proactive attitude. And that's exactly what I was discussing you at the start of my uh, session today, that it is more proactive. It's not a box ticking exercise. The quality control was more compliance. The quality control was more box ticking. It's quality management, proactive. You need to decide what's good. You need to decide things without the fear of negative implications. You need to decide things where quality management should take precedence over self-interest. So this is a proactive approach. But this is not a ticking, ticking the box approach. And this is scalable from small firms to large multinational networks. So this is scalable. You need to manage. A small firm will have a different quality management system. A multinational network firm like PricewaterhouseCooper, Deloitte, KPMG will have a different looking quality management system because they have better resources, they have better leaderships, they have they are more financially strong to implement systems, resources, and everything. So this is the objective. This is the perspective, right, which is behind the introduction of the quality management. So the quality management standards is not doing anything new. They're just trying to reinforce independence. They're just trying to reinforce the challenging mindset. They're just trying to uh, reinforce skepticism. They're just trying to ensure competence uh, is the yardstick. Competence becomes the benchmark of delivering audits and leaving aside the negative implications arising from uh, this attitude. So this is how things has to be thought of. Okay, now comes to the main title, which is ISQM1, Quality Management for Firms that Performs Audit or Review of the Financial Statement. Now, this was exactly the title of ISQC1, but the term control and management is what has changed in. If you look at the title of ISQC1, uh, when I used to teach for the June batch, I used to say, Quality control for a firm. Now I'm saying quality management for a firm. So that is the only change. The otherwise than that, it remains the same. But now you look down and you, you, you see a change. Now, if you have studied the ISQC1, or if you were a June AAA student, and now you are reappearing for September exams, when we look at the ISQC1, the previous one, we used to have six components of quality. Now, ISQM1 is telling there are eight components. It's eight versus six. When you look at the ISQC1, the ISQC1 used to tell us there are six components of quality. The ISQM1 is telling us there are eight components of quality. And the ISQM1 is using a terminology which is known as SOQM, System of Quality Management. Each firm needs to device, each firm needs to implement, each firm needs to assess according to their needs, according to their size, a system of quality management. You know, you know a terminology used in uh, uh, the industry a system of internal controls or internal control systems. And every listed company or every industry or every client have a different looking internal controls, not, not the same because they need to decide what's good for them according to their size. And that's the same practice is now coming to the audit firms, a system of quality management where you need to have a proactive approach in defining. But the standard is telling us that an ideal system of quality management consists of eight components. And when you look at it, look at it versus ISQC1, we used to have six. Now I have highlighted two of them in yellow, which means this is the additional. The rest is the same what you have studied in ISQC1. Uh, leave aside the yellow ones. Look at the look at the ones which are without yellow. Leadership used to be in ISQC1. Leadership is here in ISQM. 
relevant ethical requirements used to be in ISQC1. It is in the ISQM as well. Acceptance and continuation was in ISQC1, is in ISQM1 as well. Uh, engagement performance was in ISQC1, it is in ISQM1. Resources was in ISQ, uh, ISQC1, it is in ISQM. Monitoring was in ISQC, is it, it is in ISQM as well. But the only two things adding to make it a list of eight is the first one in yellow, firm risk assessment process. And the second last, information and communication. Now, if you are a clever student and you studied the AA paper, the F8 paper, and probably the SPL paper, and, and you know the elements of an internal control system of a client, if you know the elements of an internal control system, not the quality management system. The internal control systems of a client also consist of risk assessment, also consist of information and communication. If you look at the elements of a system of internal control, which is implemented at a client, also consists of risk assessment and information and communication. So the ISQM1 has not done anything unusual here, right? They've tried to develop a system which is a better quality management system by bringing the risk assessment as part of the quality management system and by bringing information and communication as part of the quality management system. So what is changing? What is the fuss among the student community that uh, so many things are changing ahead of the September exams? You you know the ISQC one. Let, let me show you that for one instance. This, this is what you used to do in ISQC one up till the June 22 exams. This is what you used to do in ISQC one. This is what I used to teach my students up to the June 22 exams. See, leadership, we still have this in ISQM. Ethics, we still have this in ISQM. Acceptance, we still have this in ISQM. Assignment of the team, this has become resources under the ISQM. Resources. So in ISQM1, you look at the term resources. That is assignment of the team. And I used to teach that. Assignment of the team. It has become resources under ISQM. Engagement performance, it's still there in ISQM. Monitoring is still there in ISQM. So you know six already, right? You know the you know the perspective. You know how a question comes on this in exam. Now, now what's happening under the ISQM? Under the ISQM, we have this. Look at this. We still have leadership. We still have ethics. We still have acceptance. We still have engagement performance, resources, assignment of the team monitoring. So the only two elements are having an incremental impact. So a system of quality management now consists of eight. Now, when you look at a scenario in future exams, uh, in a scenario, there might be some, some, some sort of an issue with the risk assessment process of the firm. There might be some sort of uh, issue with the information and communication. Because if you look at the preceding scenarios on quality control, which was a previous terminology, you used to see in the scenario, there were lots of issues relating to engagement performance. This used to come in a case study. And when you're reading the case, you, you, you used to see there was lack of direction in the case, lack of supervision in the case, the manager was absent, uh, the, the, the junior was doing some very complex task, etc. There used to be lots of issues within the way the audit was performed. And most of the time, the scenario was focused on engagement performance. We know a separate question comes on acceptance. We know a separate question comes on ethics. Yes, in a question on quality control used to be previously, we used to see ethics as part of a quality quality control question previously. We know examiner says, evaluate the quality control, ethical and professional issues in one question. So now examiner will say, evaluate the quality management, not control, the term will change. But the way you answer, the way you identify the issues, the way you explain the issues will not change. So I'm, I'm putting the end of my first session here because it, otherwise it'll become too lengthy for you to watch. Uh, I just want to, to ensure that you watch it with a very good focus. So I'll start my second session on ISQM1 explaining each of the eight components, comparing these eight components with June 22 versus September 22, what sort of change can you expect in an exam requirement and what change in the way you answer the question. Uh, and I'll be covering each of these components individually in the order and we'll try connecting this with 
case studies then. So this is it from the very first part of our discussion on international standards on quality management one, where we are concluding that the change of the term is important here, control versus management. I've given you a perspective behind that. Six elements in ISQC1 now becoming eight elements under ISQM1. SOQM is a very important terminology here. Quality management is a very important terminology here. And I've also given you the background, the perspective of bringing quality management. What is the reason of bringing quality management being a more proactive approach where the firm has to decide what's best for them. So I'll be back with my second discussion on the same agenda, which is quality management and looking deep inside the eight components. Take care of yourself and I'll see you back. Goodbye and Allah Hafiz.